Welcome to the untold stories on the day that a young LeBron James met his idol, Michael Jordan, and the incredible stories that you'll hear about MJ and LeBron. This video is the complete story of all the players that were involved within this day, from Jordan to LeBron, Ron Artest, Jamal Crawford, Antoine Walker, Charles Oakley. Each player details a story remembering this day. So I won't keep you waiting. All that I'll ask is that if you enjoy these videos, please hit that like button. This video in particular took me hours upon hours to edit and produce for you guys, so I'd greatly appreciate it if you guys could hit that like button. I know this is a big ask, but let's aim for 23,000 likes. LeBron James, Michael Jordan, the number 23, that would be incredible. If you are new, hit that subscribe button and comment down below what you think of this story. Also, a special mention to these channels, all the links of the full videos will be down below in the description. And I hope you guys enjoy. Was there, uh, when, you're, when you're a kid, who did, who did you look up to? Who, who was, uh, in your mind, your game you were playing? When you're wow, playing? you know, I love Michael Jordan. The guy I've looked up to my whole life. Really? The same number as Michael, too, 23. Right. Uh, man, that, that's my inspiration in basketball. Mm -hmm. um, the way that he approached the game, the way that he led his troops when he went out on the court, uh, and his never-say-die attitude, man, was, uh, was something I always looked up to. You meet him? Uh, you know him? Yeah. What was it like meeting uh, Michael Jordan for you? Was that pretty cool? Oh, yeah, it was great. You know, um, for him, for me to meet Michael Jordan, it was like, I think it was better than the president. <laughs> Let me tell you a story, as a matter of fact. So I'm growing up watching this guy on TV every day, and uh, I'm like, wow, you know, he's an amazing basketball player. I, hopefully someday I get an opportunity to meet him. So when I met Michael Jordan for the first time, I literally couldn't believe it was him. I seen him walking towards me, and it was kind of like, he was walking on air. And to me, it looked like he was like levitating. I was like, <laughs> this guy didn't even, he walked over here and his feet didn't even touch the ground. I, I was, I had to, I had to pinch myself. Was, was, is that My, Michael? Who? And it was, it's like, he was like black Jesus to me. I couldn't believe it. Like people, you know, I felt the dude looked like Jesus Christ to me. <laughs> I was like, are you, are you finally here? <laughs> you know, he was black Jesus to me. Nobody could tell me anything different. I think it was my junior year in high school. I go up to Chicago and I go to a gym called Hoops where he, he plays basketball in the summertime. I was in Chicago, Maverick and I and our good friend G. We, they take us to Hoops. I'm going there. I didn't know he was going to be there. And before they play, they say Mike always, you know, used to lift before they play. Mav know the story. So we walk upstairs, and nobody told me that Mike lift before he played. I don't know anything about lifting right now. I'm, I'm a high school sophomore. I don't know anything about lifting. Um, we walk up there, and the first person I see is Charles Oakley. You know, Oak being from Cleveland, dapped him up. I had seen Oak around the city a few times, you know. Tim Grover had the gym, and uh, we always, you know, come in and work out. And Oak move, and when he moves, Mike is sitting on the bench press. And I was like, oh, my fucking God. For LeBron, I was like, black Jesus. They were just, just in awe. His aura, it was like a ghost. It, he, doesn't seem, him, he doesn't seem real, does he? He That's don't what seem I tell real. He, he don't seem real. <laughs> <laughs> Think about that. Me and you both feel the same way. There's a million other people that feel the same way. They see this he don't look real. He doesn't. And everybody else that's ever met him, even superstars from Shaq to LeBron, everybody else that's ever met him, has said the exact same thing. I didn't think he was real, man. You don't understand. I didn't think Michael Jordan was real. I only thought he lived in the TV, either in games or commercials or come fly with me on cassette tapes. Wow, yeah. I didn't think he was real. You know, he hung around all day with us and just had a ball. And it was like, holy shit. It's Michael Jordan, like it's Michael <laughs> Jeffrey yeah. Jordan in the flesh. And I couldn't believe it. And we went back upstairs into the weight room. And it was just me, him, Tim, G, and LeBron. And he talked to us for like 15 minutes. And that was the first time LeBron ever met Michael. We talked for about maybe even a little bit longer. I think LeBron learned something from being there because he saw that hard work pay off. If, if the man above would have took me that day, I would have lived a hell of a life, I swear to God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that was... That was like the best one of the best feelings. Now, I've had ever he had. at that point in your uh, life in your basketball career, had he heard of you? Did he know of you? 
Well, yeah, I think he did. And Michael sat and had a conversation with us just about basketball. And I honestly don't remember anything that was said in the conversation. Was He was very – I think he was talking to LeBron about, like, NBA and being a pro and giving him lessons. But it was like, you know, everything just sounded, like, blurred out to me. Like, I was listening <laughs> to God speak. It was like – I don't even remember what he was saying, and that was the first time he met Michael and myself. He called me a young fella, of course, yeah. uh, you know, and just basically told me to keep working at it, and someday I can get to the NBA. I was a junior in high school, so, uh, yeah. you know, I guess he told me something right, and I just kept working at it. Yeah. And when I got back home to Akron, and I told my boys, and like my boys, because they know how crazy I am about MJ, they was like, no, nah, you're lying. I'm like, dog, I was, <laughs> not only did I see Mike, I was on the court with Mike. Could, would it, I, and maybe it didn't work out chronologically. You, I, I'm guessing you, did you ever get to play any kind of game with him? And so when he was 16, he was out there playing. And if you watch the game, he wasn't like dominating. Yeah. He wasn't like, but he didn't stick out. You didn't go like, oh, there's a kid out there. It was like, oh, there's just another player yeah. out there. Like, you know, he got a couple buckets and went up and down. He wasn't at all ready to defend. But on offense, you know, if you can pass, you can play. And he could pass, and he had the size and the ability to get in and got a couple buckets. And it'd be interesting to see what how he remembers those games. That's actually something I may have to ask him about this summer when we're chilling is, like, do you, how does he remember those games? Yeah, yeah. And did he take anything from it, like, that was a gauge? Sophomore year, 2001, you're on the court with him. What's I mean, what's that experience like? I mean, shit, you're on the court with, you know, Black Jesus, as you said. Do you remember anything yeah. about that run? Yeah, him and Antoine Walker was talking so much shit. <laughs> I swear to God. The way we pushed each other, talk trash. Back and forth, back and forth. Twan was fantastic. Talk a lot of shit and play and do the shimmy. And As the summer went along, the run, it just got bigger and bigger. It got to a point, there would be 30 pros in the gym. It was me, Juwan Howard, Quentin Richardson, Corey Maggetti, Darius Miles, Bobby Simmons, Gilbert Arenas, Paul Pearson, yeah, Penny, Ron Penny Artes. was playing. Finley was in there, Stackhouse was in there, a young LeBron was in there. Jamal Crawford played against Ray Allen, Tim Hardaway, Anton. Everybody was coming through Chicago. We never lost. If you lose a game, you may have to sit two games. Wow. But on top of that, you mentioned LeBron. LeBron had to be only 15, 16 at this time, 16. right? 16. Everybody had heard about him. He came to Chicago, play pick up with us. When LeBron was a sophomore, Antoine brought him that. Yeah. Maverick was, his, was was a little older than him, but he hadn't wow. went to college yet. So was my, he able I, to hold his own? Oh, without question. When I tell you the competitiveness of the of these games, we used to go at it every single day. That as a kid, and and you know Mike when they're playing against him, but to have the every day to see his competitive drive at his age, I think he was thirty nine. He wanted to win every fucking day, man. Every day. He, <laughs> he was just it's something different. I remember one time he came out there and some dude was talking trash to him. Yeah, Michael, I'm doing this. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm doing this now. And I'm making, as a player, player making, he's on max contract. I'm getting my Ferraris now. I'm doing this. You got a new Ferrari and you showed up and you were pretty <laughs> happy about it. Can you, what, what all went down with that story? One time, yeah, I came and I, I had a drop top Bentley. So, okay. you know, I mean, everybody knows. I mean, you got 30 pros at the gym. Half of them, more than half, live in Chicago. You know that You know that parking lot was lit up. You know, it was a car show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it was a car show. So it was just one of those days I got the Bentley. You know, we get through with the gym. Like I said, we all hanging out. He sees my car. He gave me some compliments. He was like, okay, that's nice. He was like, you know what? I'm going to drive something every day for you. And they say, yeah, well, now I get mine. They give it to me free just to drive it. I'm going to drive a different Ferrari every day for you now. He drove a Ferrari, different Ferrari, five days with the matching sweatsuit. <laughs> with the matching sweatsuit, man. He had on, this is a true story, Shane. He had on a yellow Jordan outfit. He had on some black, white, and yellow Jordans that probably still ain't out. And outside, he had a yellow Ferrari to match. So he just was, his whole thinking was just on a whole different plateau. And, you know, for me, when I got the opportunity, they didn't let me play for like the first hour, you know, no. I'm, I'm, I'm like, <laughs> young guy I'm 16. Yeah, the young guy, I'm sitting there just waiting my turn. And, and, and to be honest, I didn't even think I would even get the opportunity 
to play. And the only reason I played is because the guys that was in the league, you know, after a few, you know, after hours, some of them didn't get tired. They're like, you know what? Well, I'm done with this shit. I'm done with this shit. Hey, young fella, hey, we, we need a fifth. You want to play? And a young LeBron was in there. He was killing. LeBron was 15 years old, just like killing. He and was then, 15? Yeah, he was 15. He was just like, this kid was killing. Um, he was playing very well. <laughs> so, so um, yeah, that's why I, I he gave was him a there. forearm on fast break. He was coming, he was cooking, he was cooking. He couldn't, nobody can guard him, LeBron James. At all. He couldn't guard him. I'm like, I'm getting embarrassed. He's embarrassing us. <laughs> so he's coming out full speed, LeBron James. I, boom, I lay him on the floor. He get up and start cooking more. He's just tough. He's about, he was about 225 at that time. Mm. But I remember him just being tough. You know, so for me to be on the court, you know, at 16 years old, sophomore in high school with, you know, you know, my favorite player of all time, man, it was like, this, this can't be real, man. If you pinch me, man, I was like, please, I hope I don't wake up. Yeah, I remember that game. It was the point of that game. In which you elbowed Jordan in the ribs. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> <laughs> Real easy. What happened? Well, um, all right, so. When I, I remember um, you broke his ribs. Yeah, we was in the Chicago in the summertime playing pickup basketball. At that age, when I sense that somebody is better than me, I go into my street mode. I'm only 19. You know what I'm saying? Michael Jordan's there, so it's just crazy. All right, so, but I'm playing real hard. And I don't think he expected that, so he would always say, yo, come back, come back. As a 19, I just had a lot of energy, and he liked the bump, you know, it's MJ. MJ would have referees come down. So MJ, when you get, when he gets the ball, he scores. He was very good at 38 years old. So I tried to, yeah, he's still amazing. And I was 19 or 20, so I was trying to deny him. Michael posted me up. You can't let Michael get the ball. At this point, he's the best player in the league. Immediately, I'm like, I don't give up. Rat's ass. He's just as crazy as I am. He scored every single time. And I got tired of him scoring. So he was holding me, and I knew if I let him touch the ball, he's going to score. So I cannot let him touch it. And then as I tried to move his arm, because he, he held me, he wanted this position. I'm like, nah, you can't have this position. You know what I'm saying? So when I was trying to deny him and get his arm out the way, I just, my elbow hit him in the ribs. Then his, his ribs cracked. But so it wasn't, it wasn't like, <laughs> you know, you crack, you crack, you, it, it just, you know. And that was like one of the worst days of my life as a basketball player. He life. went down and they- No, he didn't go down. Jordan's crazy. I hit him in the ribs, he holds his ribs. He was like this, ah, and he got the ball. But the crazy thing was after he went, ah, after he did that, he came down. He takes about five seconds, then it's his ball. Crossover, free throw, free throw line. And he ends the game on the jumper. Bang, right, game over, and then he walked off. Mike hit a game winner in the game, just like Brian said, with the yeah. same Utah foul yeah. through the pickup. Same thing. It was like, game over, MJ. And was like, yeah, that's why they pay me 33 million to do this. That's why they pay <laughs> yeah. me 33. Hey. I'll never forget that. He gonna talk trash. That's in it. He that's can't his help DNA. It. He can't help that. Right? Right. And went off like this. And I'm like, damn, MJ is nice. And then the next day, I found out he broke his ribs. And then I got the call the next day. Actually, in the media, it said, Ron Artest punched Michael Jordan. That's what it said the next day. Wow. It said, Ron Artest punched Michael Jordan and broke his ribs. Yeah. I broke his ribs, he averaged 25. He'd been averaging 35. He's out three months. So he was cooking everybody. And um, I, it was something that I was very, uh, I regret to this day because he averaged 25 points that year. And he had to take off three months. I, when I seen him play that summer, I'm like, wow, MJ's gonna average 35 points. Cause he was killing everyone. At that time, MJ was killing. When I broke his ribs, he sat out three months, came back averaging 25. And I was telling people, if it wasn't for those three months off, he would average 35. He was killing them. Right. And you talking about all stars was in the gym. Because that was, that was the year after he retired, correct? That was one year after, after he retired. Right. And he was cooking. And when he came back and averaged 25, I wanted to see MJ average 30. Yeah. And I felt like, you know, when I did that, I felt like I stunted his progress of conditioning, training, and, and, and I remember just regret. That's one of the things I regret the most in my career. And um, Tim was pissed. Huh? TG was pissed. I remember Who? that. Tim Grover. Oh, really? I don't know. I, don't, I, was, I was going. I, I it was I like was... waves went around Jordan brand, like, like, like going crazy. Like Mike hurt because you broke his ribs. Wow. It, How it was he after time. it happened? Was he a mensch or was he uh, pissed off at Well, him? I was upset for a couple days. You know, I, 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 didn't, I didn't go back to play the next day. I was just, I was kind of upset. So I was sad for two days. <laughs> right? I was in my house. I lived in downtown Chicago and I couldn't get up out the bed mm. thinking about Mike, right? Mike, and he heard about this. I was talking to my agent. And then Mike called me, yo. 
and uh, MJ called me. Who's this? Mike, Mike who? Michael Jordan? Oh, shit. <laughs> and um, he says, uh, hey, man, um, it's all right, man. Don't worry about it. It happens. It happens. He's like, it's going to be man. okay. It happens. I'm like, oh, wow. Thanks, MJ. You know? And I was like, oh, all right, cool. And I went back to play. <laughs> 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 I went back to play in the summertime, man. First time I met Mike, yo. It's crazy. That's crazy. That's crazy. crazy. I didn't know that. I didn't know it was the first initial time. Yeah. He's inspired everybody. Yes. Like, at, at those runs, Jay-Z and Beyonce were coming to watch Pickup. Like, he's inspired everybody from every walk of life, you know, and, and that's what he's just, he's just, I think God just put him here and said, you're going to be the one. And let me know what you thought about this crazy story in the comment section down below. If you did enjoy it, please hit that like button. Let's aim for 23,000 likes. Subscribe if you are new. Here are two new videos that I think you may enjoy, and I will catch you guys in the next one.